What you're about to experience are my opinions and truths. I'm suggesting their possibilities for you to consider, in which you can then come up with your own logical conclusions. Welcome out, everyone, all of you great decoders around the world, wherever you may be. My name is Logan, and this, of course, is Decode Your Reality. And today we're going to be breaking down and decoding the simulation. This will be simulation decoded. And a uh, big, big shout out to you know, Jason from Archaics, Jason Bashir's uh, Archaics.com, his YouTube channel, uh, kind of, you know, an inspiration behind this. But I mean, him and I joined forces, done, you know, two podcasts. We're going to be doing a third one. But, you know, we were running parallels because I've been talking about us being in a movie and mankind being used. And he kind of just puts a different wrapper on it. But nonetheless, we were talking about the same kinds of things. And, it's all about the simulation. So what does it mean to live in a simulation? How does that work out for human beings? Well, you're about to find out during this presentation, bringing the esoteric, bringing the mystical art platforms. All of you know how I roll. Those of you that are new, welcome out. Thank you for the support. If you're having a challenging time following along, it may take a little bit to get yourself uh, really flowing with this information. So just keep watching. I promise one day it's going to click and then you're going to have the eyes to see. Those of you that are returning subscribers, thank you very much for all your support, your donations, your Patreons. It's really much, really greatly appreciated. So let's, let's jump into this simulation decoded and here's part of the intro. So simulation is really heavily tied to this 35 and i know it really well because i was born on the 35th day of the year and this is one of the main reasons why i am your tour guide showing you around this amusement park called life but it's really tied to this element on the periodic table. When we take numerology and we break down the word simulation, giving us that 35, we wanna now get an extended uh, observation of what this 35 means. And we bring in now alchemy, the elements on the periodic table. And boy, what a gem these have been in my personal research over the countless years I've been doing this now. It's the element bromine, the 35th element on the periodic table. What's up, bro? You know, I mean, there's so many ways that we can look at this and bromine's average atomic weight or mass, which is what it's measured in the laboratory right there is 79.904. And this is called isotope number 80 in science. They're going to round this up. So this is why numbers encroach. Those of you that have been decoding, you see how numbers kind of bleed into one another. And it's, it's not even about pairing. We're talking about triplicates and quadruplets and they just, they just bleed into one another back and forth, side to side. So this 79.904 becomes the number 80, the isotope number 80. And this is gonna lead to Mercury, the messenger of the sun. And perhaps telling us the Mercury is the messenger of the actual simulation. But there's so many ways to break this down 
But obviously the 79 in bromine's atomic mass is very important because it's going to lead to this big element on the world stage called gold, which is, you know, tied to the number 17 and through its numerology. And we're going to get into the 17 hot and heavy. But this is what I feel this whole entire reality is based upon. It's the energetic exchange of lead to gold. And that's exactly what this simulation needs to operate is the exchange of energy, the currency we run on a layer of electricity and magnetism. And when you can see, when you bring another layer of numerology into this, at the bottom in the big box with yellow saying Hebrew ordinal, this is the spelling of the tree of life through the biblical aspect now in its purest form the number 80 this is going to be tree and then this is going to be of life <coughs> excuse me and it's going to give us a total of the number 80 the number 80 so it's tied to the simulation the tree of life means the simulation and it's all about the energy exchange the transmutation of lead to gold that's through our fear and love emotions so that was the intro ladies and gentlemen let's jump into the topics during this presentation i'll break them all down for you so in the zero position the intro we just did that number one the first topic chessboard number two astrology we're going to get into some astrology western astrology number three you're on television. You know that big statement by uh, the movie The Truman Show? Ed Harris from the moon. You're on television. Are, you, are we on television? Well, I'm going to show you that we are. Number four, 35 is 37. And then always want to hear in the last position, number five, what did you see? I'm going to, at the very end, I'm going to ask you that. Keep your comments coming. Uh, I learn a lot from you great decoders. I don't catch everything. And a lot of you bring things to the table that uh, are very valuable. So you keep your comments coming. So let's get into the first topic now called chessboard. The chessboard, this is exactly what this simulation is all about. It's tied to the game of chess, which is, you know, why it was created. And here it is. Bam. Starting off with a bang. <coughs> simulation. Straight up in Chaldean. Again, you're going to see, I'm not going to deviate away from this uh, numerology cipher. Uh, those of you that are new, Chaldean is the oldest numerology cipher on the planet. The oldest. Doesn't mean anything beyond that, but you're going to see how beautiful this thing is when it's narrating our reality. But there it is. 35 and 35. Simu the simulation is the chessboard. We're playing a game down here. It's called chess. And there's so many ways to break this down. What I want to focus on with that in mind is this right here, the nine of diamonds card. So I'm going to bring in another mystical art platform, the, the, how valuable these have been describing our reality. It's the cards of illumination. That's what I've called them. There are many names that these are given, but it's the cards of illumination. And this nine of diamonds is a match to the word simulation. It's the 35th card in the deck. And how I found that is here's the natural lineages of the cards of illumination right here. And, you know, these can be moved around several different ways. But the way I learned um, the, the hearts are first, which is fire. The clubs are second, which is air. The diamonds are third, which is water. And then the spades would represent earth. And those are the four. And then the jokers are the zero and the 53. There's typically two jokers in the deck. But this is the natural lineages. If you want these gra graphics, just send me an email. Decode your reality at gmail.com and I'll send them to you. Just pay it forward. So the nine of diamonds is the 35th card in the deck tied to the word simulation. And, you know, it's interesting because just to the right of the card is a picture of Keanu Charles Reeves. And why I have his picture here is because he has this as his birth card. He was born on September 2nd, and it can be written 9 slash 2 or 2 slash 9. And this is going to get right into the Great Pyramid of Giza, and I have this coming up in this presentation just shortly. Hang on to your seats for this, folks. But, you know, he's wearing a pair of sunglasses. I didn't include this. Let me just go to the, the numerology of that. But when you type in the word sunglasses, you're going to see there it is, the number 35. Sunglasses, 35, tied to the word simulation. 
And I feel like this is a large piece of why they, where the sunglasses are worn in these movies. Free Guy and Terminator and They Live and The Matrix. All telling you that you're in a simulation, you're in a movie. And this guy right here, chosen to play Keanu, chosen to play Neo, as in Neo Dimium, I'm going to show that. And here it is. When you do the numerology of nine of diamonds, you get the number 60. What's interesting is diamonds is 29. Remember that Keanu Charles Reeves was born on nine slash two, which can be ultimately written as two slash nine. But he's got a nine of diamonds birth card and it's the number 60 and it's here it is. Bam. I've done his alchemology. Alchemology is the blending of numerology and alchemy. Go watch my John Wick decoded. I showed that Neodymium has several weights. One of them is 143. Keanu Charles Reeves, his alchemology is 143. How about that? So, you know, did the Wachowskis know this methodology? Or is it just simply mankind's being used to, you know, express the blueprint? Well, I believe in the latter. And it's all about feeding the wolf. What is the wolf? It's you, it's I, it's the machine. The word machine equals 24, which is a match to the word wolf, all in the same cipher. Don't need to deviate away from this cipher. You will find all the truth of how this reality works just in the Chaldean. You don't have to go anywhere beyond that. Keep it simple. And there's the big clue, because neodymium, the average is 144, Tied to the theology in 144,000, but the most abundant weight is 141. And there's pi, folks. There is the measurement of pi, 3.141. And pi is a big piece of how this reality operates. And it's tied to the simulation. And it's all about feeding the wolf. And you can't help it because that's life and you live out your life. But it's really heavily, 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 heavily tied to the Great Pyramid of Giza. I feel that without this structure standing, our reality wouldn't exist the way it exists. I, I strongly feel that way based upon my research. And the latitude longitude of the Great Pyramid of Giza is 29 degrees north and 31 degrees east. I mean, there's a match. Diamonds is 29. There's the 29 latitude. And I know that I'm going to continue to show this, how important this is, but it's really, you know, when you add up 29 and 31, Simple math, you're going to get 60. And there's the 60 again on neodymium. Neodymium is used to make magnets. Magnetic. We live in a magnetic and electric universe. And I feel like this structure, whew, if it was to be taken down, I think it would completely change the entire fabric of our reality. But nonetheless, there's the 29 and 31 giving us the 60. And I mean, you see the, the sinks in this. 60 tied to the latitude longitude. This is the speed of light, by the way. Right here, the speed of light makes up the simulation. There is no simulation unless you have light. And it's tied right into the coordinates of the Great Pyramid of Giza. How about that? And it's tied into Keanu Charles Reese, who, pl who played Neo in the movie The Matrix. The Savior. Coming down from wherever he came down from. And this was very interesting. We bring in some you know, some um, astronomy now and astrology. And I feel that I'm going to show this in my second topic right here, astrology, how I feel Sagittarius and Scorpio are heavily invested in this simulation. Sagittarius and Scorpio, notice the numerology outputs of them on a singular basis. It's a match to the latitude longitude for the Great Pyramid of Giza. Sagittarius being 29, Scorpio being 31. And they sit side by side. Sagittarius is the ninth sign. Scorpio is the eighth sign. Scorpio is the eagle, otherwise known as the phoenix. Sagittarius is uh, ruled over by Jupiter. Jupiter, the largest planet, which has the all-seeing eye on it. Maybe the eye in the sky. And then Mars, classically, rules over Scorpio, shares it with Pluto. But classically, it's going to be Mars. So you have Jupiter and Mars. And what's really fascinating about this, ladies and gentlemen, here's the symbol for Sagittarius, here's the symbol for Scorpio, and here's the symbol for Mars. And what do you see in common here? They all have an arrow pointing in the same exact direction. 
I mean, think about what I'm showing you here. And it, how does this tie into the simulation? Well, I'm going to show you that when we break down the astrology. But this is a big deal. And, you know, this is sign number nine, sign number eight. 98 or 89, 89 is tied to Yaldabaoth, the Gnostic Demiurge that perhaps runs this entire reality. So when you say Jupiter or Mars, from Scorpio and Sagittarius, the rulers of Sagittarius and Scorpio, you get 37. And when you say 35, you get 37. And 37 is tied to the eye in the sky. Well, the, what's the only planet that's got the, the great red spot on it? The all-seeing eye. It's, I mean, it's a dead giveaway. It's right on Jupiter. And Mars is the masculine side of Jupiter. It's kind of how this works through the astrology aspect. This was a big deal. These shapes obviously representing a phallus and injecting into this reality, perhaps talking about the projector. Just like how a movie projector works. Shining the light down. And these are all tied in together with the simulation right here. So it's really going to, I feel, heavily involve the Great Pyramid of Giza. I, like I said, I feel very confidently that this is a huge aspect of our simulation. Without these structures or this structure, we, life would not exist the way it does. This is a heavy influencer right here which is why they're heavily protected. I know it has a lot to do with them being the wonders of the world and all that. I get that. But the, the coordinates and how they're lined up with Orion's belt and the star Sirius, there's something much more deeper than what's on the surface of just the measurements and, you know, all the stuff that, you know, Jason and I went over in the simulation theory. I'm gonna, we're going to do in part three and I'm going to get more deeper into this stuff right here because I feel like this runs our reality. The Great Pyramid of Giza and the latitude longitude is tied into neodymium and neodymium is that 37 it's tied into pi and uh, pi and phi run our reality fear and love based on the pi and phi 16 and 21 when you look into the greek alphabet but what's really interesting is again these we bring them all together now and we have 35 being 37, I in the sky being 37, neodymium being 37, and <clears throat> neodymium's protons is 60. And when you add up the latitude longitude of the Great Pyramid of Giza, 29 plus 31, it's going to give you 60. So the folks, and this is all keeping it in Chaldean. This is a big deal right here. A very massive, massive deal right here. And neodymium's used to make magnets. We live in a magnetic and electric universe, which is how this simulation operates. It's how it operates. Now, for this last part of this topic, I decided to look at these numbers as primes. Now, what I did was I eliminated the last two numbers at the end. Why I did that? Because you may think, well, you're just cherry picking. Well, you see, because this is the most balanced with the decimal. 29.97 is the most balanced. If you add on the 92, it's a little heavy to the right. So another way to observe this, along with like your latitude, longitude, where you were born, the city you were born in, the house you're in right now, or apartment you're at right now, you could be doing this kind of stuff. See what you get for your outcomes. But look at the, the discovery that I found. When you balance these out, you get four prime numbers. 29 is the 10th prime number. 97 is the 25th prime number. 31 is the 11th prime number. And 13 is the 6th prime number. And when you add all those up, you're going to get the number 50 freaking 2. 52, which is tied to this element, tellurium, which means earth. It comes from the Latin word tellus, and it means earth. And 52 is tied to prison planet which is tied to magnetic, magnetic and electric. Magnetic and electric are both 26. We live in a magnetic and electric universe. What do you think neodymium is? You used to make magnets. See, so this, all this is, you're getting into physics and sacred geometry fits in here, but, and pure mathematics and symbols and numbers and shapes. And this is perfect, this, this whole source code. And this ain't man coding it, folks. This is the source code always playing out in the background right here. Bam. 
All right, so let's keep going. Let's now get into some astrology. I'm going to dro drop some truth bombs right now with this one. So hang on to your seats. Now, simulation is 35. So what I decided to do was I decided to take the astrology chart and then put the hours of a clock on the outskirts of the chart. Now, this chart right here is the as above chart. What do I mean by that? Well, the as above chart has, you know, Aries starting here in the nine o'clock position, but instead of Taurus going down, Taurus goes up. See, these are mirrors of one another. So this is the as above chart. And I showed this in my uh, illumination decoded. If you haven't seen that uh, decode or enter the dragon, excuse me. And when you look and see what zodiac signs are between three and five because this is what we're talking we're talking about the simulation 35 what is the three and the five encasing sagittarius and scorpio and i just go right back over here to this and it's sagittarius and scorpio being the number 60 tied to neodymium which is tied to the great pyramid of giza the latitude longitude and the symbols Mars and Scorpio and Sagittarius all have that arrow pointing in the same direction. Why is that? What is the synchronicity with this? This is a big deal. This is the as above now, part of the simulation. So Sagittarius and Scorpio have a big say in this simulation. But let's keep going. What about the so below chart? Now, this is going to be the, the classic way you, as an astrologer, when you read birth charts, you're going to look at it this way. The so below puts Aries again at the nine o'clock position, and then Taurus goes down. And this goes counterclockwise. So essentially, this goes clockwise. It goes, it goes from, from this position upwards. And then the so below goes in the nine o'clock position, it goes down. One runs counterclockwise, run one, run, one runs clockwise, just like the stars do. Just like the stars in the canopy, that's how they run. They run, like, it's like a corkscrew. And this so below puts Leo the lion and Virgo, the virgin, at the three and five o'clock position. And you get the four stuck in the middle, which is the box, the cube. Four is the cube in between this. So there's a lot of depth to this. And what is Leo ruled by? The sun. The sun, the simulation. And Leo is five and Virgo is six. What is 56? Lights, camera, action, if you've been paying attention. Now, what about the Chinese? Want to bring the Chinese into this? This is how valuable this is. I love the Chinese astrology. This is the so below Chinese astrology. Look at what's in the five o'clock position. The dragon. And what's encasing the three? The snake. It's the dragon and the snake. Think about these signs and what they mean if you go esoteric with this. The dragon, the most revered animal in all of Chinese culture, which is Leo the lion, and it's ruled by the sun. The dragon is the sun, the sun devil. And then you get the snake, the simulation, the snake, the serpents. Think about really, really think about what I'm showing you here with the Chinese, they all have their say in this. And then there's gonna be the opposites with these, the dog and the pig, and, and you're gonna have the, uh, the Aquarius, and you're gonna have Pisces the fish. And we just left this age, many astrologers think we just left this age, and then we've entered into Aquarius. So this is very interesting, these concepts that I'm showing you here, all tied to the three and five on the face of a clock and bringing it right into numerology. See how this all ties in there? I know this is the way it works. I don't need anybody's permission or approval to know this is the way this works. But do you have the eyes to see what I see? It goes a lot deeper than this. I'm just giving you kind of the... the, the uh, the basic fundamentals. And then lastly, for this topic right here of astrology, I decided to once again, bring in the compass that measures a perfect circle, 360 degrees right there at the top. And of course, this compass goes clockwise and counterclockwise representing the as above and the so below. This chart again is the so below chart, putting Leo and Virgo here at the three and five position on the clock. And what's really fascinating about this, ladies and gentlemen, is when you take this right here and get into more of Jason from Archaics, another big shout out to him, and that number 138. You see, when you do, the, when you start at the zero position 
and you go counterclockwise, you're gonna have 10 and 20 and 30 and 40 and you're gonna go around and you're gonna hit this 138 mark right there. Bam, and what sign is it in? It's in the sign of Taurus. Taurus the bull and Taurus has got the bull horns and this is where you're gonna get the by bull from. Think about what I'm showing you now here. The bullseye, Wall Street, New York Stock Exchange, got the bull. Taurus is in the month of May, primarily. May is really kind of when spring is really moving into summer. These are really important. And then if, as you shoot the arrow, remember what I showed here. When you shoot the arrow, when you shoot the arrows here, okay, it's going to go up here and this is where it's going to go through, right here. Scorpio. And you get the Phoenix rising. Which is what Jason from Archaics keeps talking about. The Phoenix event. What is the Phoenix event? Well, I believe we create the embryo, all of us down here, in the simulation. And when it's time for the Phoenix to rise, whoop, it rises. And it goes up. And it's masculine. Because it looks like this. And these all have their hands in it. But I mean, there's Scorpio right there. Same symbol as Mars and Sagittarius. They're all tied together, ladies and gentlemen. And bam, there it is. And what is 138 on the opposite end of the spectrum of here? 322. Right around there, but it's 322. If you line it up exactly, 320. what is 322? Most of you should have bells going off right now, what that 322 means. It's half of 161, which is the golden ratio, but what about doing the numerology of Taurus and Scorpio tied to this simulation and the Phoenix event and the Phoenix rising? Because we live in this si simulation. The simulation changes when the Phoenix rises. And this right here just may be the golden egg to show you how this whole thing works on, on the map of astrology. And Taurus and Scorpio, where this line moves through is 53... And that's a big deal. It's, it's this element iodine. Remember, 53 is the 16th prime number. 16 is tied to the word hell. Tied to your birthday. And it's the I am. The I am that I am. And how valuable Francis Bacon is. The capital letter I. It's 35. The I. The simulation is 35. It's that you can see the connections here. And it's all found from this right here from 138 degrees and this is supposedly the measurements of the great pyramid so i know this is how it works folks i am going to keep digging but i know this to be my truth now and why i feel the pyramid has everything to do with this reality without it we wouldn't have this reality the way it is but there it is bam three and there's your 322 it's right there, folks. You, you can't miss this stuff now, now that you have the eyes to see it. So let's get into the um, third topic now. You're on television. You're live in front of the whole world. Ed Harris, Truman Show. Told us the truth. You're on television. You're in a movie, folks. It's called The Simulation. There it is. And, and we're in a movie. I mean, you want to talk about sinks? Just, just using Chaldean again in alchemy. Simulation is 35. Gadolinium is 35. Why Gadolinium? Because it's the 64th element on the periodic table. How many squares on a chessboard? We talked about the game of chess. Chessboard is 35. How many squares? 64. 64 squares on a chessboard. Chessboard is 35. See what I'm saying? Those are the synchronicities. Just using Chaldean. That's why Chaldean's a top dog cipher. And then, bam! 64. 64. 157 is the average weight of gadolinium tied to our codones, 64 possible codones in our DNA. And you're on television. You see, because the 157 is the 37th prime number. What's 37? It's I in the sky. The word 35 equals 37, which is going to be my last topic. I'm going to be coming up right here. 35 is 37. And you're on television. See, we're, on, we're in a movie. We're, you're in a soap opera. And there it is. 35 is 37. There's the 37. Found from the 157. Found from the weight of the 64th element. Gadolinium. Found from the numerology of saying Gadolinium. Starting with simulation being 35. All these match. See this? Just in the Chaldean, folks. 
Top dog Zypher. 35, 37, eye in the sky. So what's watching you? I am the eye in the sky looking at you. I can read your mind. Alan Parsons Project. Thank you very much, Alan Parsons Project. The maker of fools. <clears throat> so it really comes down to these two elements bringing alchemy into this once again. The value of alchemy is th the 35 linking to bromine. I showed that earlier, tied to the tree of life and gold. But then we have this element right here, chlorine. Now I know a lot of these elements have the same atomic weights. They do. But you got to know what you're looking for. There are many facets to this. This right here is the dead giveaway because chlorine's average, its bullseye, is 35.45. 45 is Pandora's box. This is a dead giveaway. So, and 17 is the seventh prime. Number seven is the chakras. Seven chakras that we have. Seven colors of the rainbow. Seven is the fourth prime number. I mean, it just keeps going. But so these two are tied to the 35. Remember, that the blood, if you talk, checked out my bloodline decoded, I feel that this, this element was tied to the first blood type, the O blood type, perhaps being the first blood type. Part of the simulation. So it's really these two elements. So let's break them down. When you take 35 and you add 17, simple math, you're going to get 52. And you're going to go right back to that tellurium representing earth and representing the prison planet which is magnetic and electric see it's just so simple and you know iron is 26 iron's tied to the yod heh vah -Heh. yod heh vah -Heh is 26 so is it the yod heh vah -Heh that is earth or is it running earth or is it the runner of the simulation is it saturn is it you know i mean there's so many ways tetragrammaton you know the aton at the very end thank you jordan maxwell that means the sun tetragrammaton is a10 in the Egyptian. And A10 was a sun deity. <laughs> just, it just, it's all connected. Just different packaged things. Right there. Just found from SIP 35 chlorine and bromine. And just, let's just keep going with this. This is how ridiculously coded this is. How funny this is now. It's the Truman Show. I mean, you can't get any more dead on with this. When you do the numerology of chlorine and bromine, the only two elements that have that 35, well, I shouldn't say this is the only one, but this is the average. So this is the dead giveaway. Chlorine and bromine, the 35 brothers, or brother and sister, 57. Truman Show's 57. How about that? Not just the Truman Show, but how about this right here? How about this movie, Enter the Dragon? I came out with a decode. A lot of you have watched it. Thank you for your support on that. You enter into the simulation, which is the dragon. That's a 57, matching the chlorine and bromine. Both have the 35, and there's the simulation. It's just so easy. It's just all connected. And then how about this? One of the longest running soap operas ever, one of the most popular ever, Days of Our Lives in the United States. That's 57. See, we're in a soap opera. And this, always, this right here used this sand timer telling you that when the sands run out, that's it. Reset. And then you get your Taurus field there. And you get your figure eight and the Phoenix events in there. All this is all connected. But that 57, of course, that's going to reduce, reduce all the way down to the number three. It's going to lead into Gemini. It's going to lead into the 3.14 and Pi again. And that three, the magical three. And how about this society? You think these people can escape the aspects of the simulation? No. They're being used just like you are, just like I am. You're playing out your part. Stop paying attention to these people. Stop giving them energy. That's how this whole reality works. It's based on energy exchange. A lot of people like to give them their gas, give them their energy. Point the finger, it's these bad people. You just waste your gas. They're part of the simulation. Make no mistake about it. They're part of the simulation. Well, let's get into this card right here because the eight of spades is 57 and this is this is how ridiculously coded and scripted <coughs> my reality is see this is my birth card right here as i've been showing check out my prison planet part two but you see my birthday february 4th is the 35th day of the year my birthday it's tied to the simulation that's why i'm here to tell you this stuff i'm showing you how this this world operates i was supposed to it's part of my code my job 
That's why I got this birthday. I mean, it's you right there, eight of spades when you say it, 57. I mean, 35, and what's pi? 3.14. My last name is pi yet. If you reduce the 14 down, you get 35. It's just, it's all part of my code, folks. 35. I mean, you can't miss it. It's pi. You know, pi. 3.14 is 35. That's my birthday. And I get the eight of spades, which is the 57. Just keeps going. But what if I bring in the tarot to give us the picture? So the tarot came after cards of illumination. These came first from my research and then tarot came after. So the eight of spades is the eight of swords. So this is my birth card. <laughs> it's the trapped and limited card. You ain't going anywhere. You're all locked up. You get the swords, blindfold on. You ain't going anywhere. And this is card 57 and 58. What I mean by that is, here is the natural lineages of the tarot. And this is the most popular spread that I've seen on the world stage. It's taking the fool card right here in the zero position and then including it in the 22nd position, making it the last major arcana card. But there are other ways to observe this where you take the fool out. And when you take the fool out, it's going to push all these numbers back. So this ace of wands becomes card number 22. And because of that, this is where the numbers are going to bleed. Just like I, they do in the latitude longitude of the Great Pyramid of Giza. It's 60 and 61. But here is my 58. Right here. And it would be 57 if you take the fool out. So it's 57 and 58. That's why I'm showing you that. And why I'm listing it here. And this is going to make sense because when you do the numerology of Eight of Swords, it becomes the 50. This is how tightly woven this is for me and my code. Because you're not going to get all these same outcomes doing it with all the cards. But of course, as fate would have it, here you go. Here's the 57 and the 58 right there by the tarot card and the card of illumination being, they're, they're being the same cards. Just one shows the picture, one shows a symbol. 57 and 58. So there it is, side by side. Card 35 tied to the simulation, tied to the chessboard. And you're trapped and limited down here in the movie. So when you bring in the string of pi, because, you know, I mean, my birthday is pi, the pi, you know, besides March 14th. The 49, when you bring it into the string of pi, my last name being Payet, 49 occupies digits 57 and 58. 57 and 58. Why I'm showing this? It's because of this. I have a decode on this, highlighting and showcasing Alice in Chains, the great band Alice in Chains, off their album, Dirt, Down in a Hole. Down in a Hole. You're going down into the simulation. So then you're trapped and limited when you get down here. And what's the eight? The Taurus field. The eight represents duality, one zero and another zero. Black and white. Down in a hole. <laughs> that's, how much, that's how much comedy is in my life, ladies and gentlemen. And when you go down in the hole, here's the medicine cards, the 52 cards of the medicine deck right here, using animals, insects, and reptiles. I don't do I even have... Yeah, I do. Here are, they, here are the, the uh, medicine cards. Again, if you want these graphics, just send me an email and I'll send them to you. Decodereality at gmail.com. There's the salmon card right there. These cards came out in 1988. I'll tell you right now, they weren't sitting down with numerology trying to figure out what animal, insect, reptile, or fish to put on there to match up with numerology. That's just ludicrous thinking. No, those people were being used. This is absolute ironclad proof, support, that these people are just being used, just like you and I are, to, to fill out your responsibility in the blueprint. When you come down on a hole and you become a fish, you live out life in the matrix, the matrix, which is Maya, the illusion, the simulation. They're all 17, just in Chaldean. See how powerful Chaldean is? When you do the, th how about the 35? So we showed the 49 down on a hole. What about the 35 tied to the simulation? What card is that? Well, more comedy. <laughs> it's the horse. How, how, how big of an animal this is, how stable, uh, how reliable people instead of cars they rode horses think about that with the simulation well when you say horse it's 22 and then enter the dragon's 22 and how about this whoops truman is 22 
You see, Truman Show. We're in a simulation, the Truman Show. It's 22, tied to titanium, the Titans and the fallen angel story and all that stuff. 22 is going to be tied to Taurus because Taurus is the second sign and the horse is 22 and the enter the dragon is 20. The great dragon got hurled down into the simulation. Michael's 22 that fought the dragon. They're all same cipher, 22. <laughs> so when you say four nine, I'm going back to here, down in a hole. Remember, I'm going to go back from here. Found from Pi. 49 occupies 57 and 58. This is my birth card in the tarot in the card of illumination. Right there telling you you're, in, you're trapped and limited. 49. When you say 49, it gives you 39. And that's a match to guiding light. So, and it's not even just a match, but look at 4 is 23, guiding is 23. 9 is 16, light is 16. Guiding light is 39. 4, 9 is 30, going down into the hole. Well, what does that link up to? This right here. Those of you that are new, this is the original spelling of Lucifer. It's not even Lucifer. It's hell. If you want to include vowels, you're going to get halal. But it's hell. 39. It's going to be 75, 39, and 12. And 3. Fed 3 again. This is, this is a big deal, the guiding light that provides the simulation. So now you know, what is Lucifer's job to sh expand on the simulation? It is the simulation. It's got a large portion of the simulation. Lucifer does, the light bringer, which weakens the nations because it's part of the sun and radiation and all that kind of stuff. You can get into so many different layers with this. So what if we take the golden ratio, because you know this is the light, the guiding light, well, the guiding light's going to be tied to the golden ratio, the Fibonacci sequence, the measurement of nature, tied to the sun and the simulation. So the 35 and the golden ratio occupies digits 56 and 57. And 56 is lights, camera, action, folks. I mean, you can't, this is just, <laughs> what are we to do with this? It's telling all of us you're in a movie. It's what Hollywood says lights camera action and then you get the 57 with the Truman show there it is 56 and 57 find from the guiding light the guiding light is telling you and 57 is the Truman show tied to my birth card that's right it's tied to the 35 so getting back to the simulation to finish this part of the presentation and get into the last topic Thanks for sticking with me, ladies and gentlemen. Those of you that are this far, made it this far, you want it bad enough. You want this information bad enough. You guys are really the ones that go deep. But here's some advanced decoding using the sine and cosine waves. Sine and cosine waves are the measurement of the perfect circle, which is pi. You can plug in any number. If you go to numberempire.com, the great website, and thank you, numberempire.com, and you type in any number here, it's 35. <clears throat> you come down. Here's the sine and cosine wave. And I showed how the sine and cosine wave works with pi itself. When the wheel spins, you get the sine wave and then the cosine wave, which essentially makes up magnetism and electricity. And that's what we're measuring. And the numbers all measured that way. So the sine and cosine wave start off with 0 0.4 and 0 0.9 what is what do you see right there i got it circled 49 down in a hole you see how tightly woven this code is same cipher down in a hole 49 so the simulation means you come down into the hole to experience this game called life and you become a fish when you come down here that's why jesus and the whole theology we're all fishers of men that story they're all in the story in the script just a big cosmic joke folks it's just a big joke. And then when we, when, we, when we add these up, totally add them up, here's the sine wave. It's going to give us lutetium, 71. 71 is the 20th prime number, 20's duality. You see, when you, this, is, this is just straight up right there. 71, when you go here, look at this. When you go to 71, it's the 20th prime number. Lucifer, lutetium, the 20th prime number. Then you go here and you type in this word right here. And you get 20. See that? So what does the simulation mean? Found from the 71, from the sine wave of 35, you come down into duality. <laughs> and you're going to get this element lutetium right here, which is 
you know, Manly P. Hall, Lucifer's number 741. It's right there in plain sight. Lucy, Lucifer, you can't miss it. Lucifer's the light bringer, the guiding light. And then what about the cosine wave? Well, it's, it's the prison planet. <laughs> it's 52. <laughs> and when you, take them, when you take them both and you add them up, <laughs> this is isotope 175 in science. They're going to round it up. And this is isotope 128. Look at what you get. 303. <laughs> and there's the 33. So you can see it's not Masonic. It has nothing to do with them, folks. Nothing. It's the source code. It's the source code. And, you know, if just for fun, I decided that what, what city has the 303 area code in the United States? Well, it's Denver. And, you know, they, had the mil they, they got a large thing under the airport there. A lot of people in the pole shift, they think this is going to be the new board, the new uh, coastline. Denver, Colorado, mile high city. So many sinks with this, but it's got the 303. I mean, look at this. It was established in, of, of all days, of all years, 1947. I mean, are you kidding me? 47 tied to the Tetragrammaton. Just ridiculous. Just ridiculous. And then when you go look at the latitude, longitude of Denver, look at what it is, 39. And 104, take, you, if you take 39 and you, uh, you get out your calculators and you take 39 and you add up 104, you're going to get pi. <laughs> you're going to get 143. And if you do the spillover, it'll be 144 tied to neodymium. Something big with this city. Big. But there it is. And that the 39 with the latitude of Denver. Where did I have it? Oh, it was right here. 39, there it is. <laughs> 39 is the latitude of Denver. <laughs> it's tied to Lucifer, <laughs> the guiding light. R right there, you can't miss it. And 49 is down in a hole. <laughs> it's just all tied together, folks, when you, when you look at this stuff, man. It's just hilarious right here. You can't, you can't miss it now that you've seen it. Now you know, we're living in a scripted reality, folks. Script it. Man is not going this deep to, to program out life and to base their patterns on life because of this stuff right here. No. Sorry. Let's get into the last topic now. Thanks for sticking with me. 35 is 37. I've already kind of shown this, but 35 is 37 when you say it. And then again, these numbers bleed. 35, 36, 37. 36 is operating system, but it's the eye in the sky. 35. It's, it's tied to the eye in the sky, the 37. And when you break these down even more, to tell you about the simulation, okay, you're in duality. And it's called life. I mean, it's 17 and 20. Life is 17. Duality is 20. I mean, that you can't miss it now. It's life in duality. And then when you bring in the cards of illumination... And the tarot gives us further rendition of how this reality operates. These are the 17th and 20th cards in the deck. They're both clubs. Clubs are the mental realm, the mind of the cosmos. It's the four and seven. And what, what, is, what, what is the 47? Tetragrammaton, tied to titanium, tied to silver, which is the most electric element on the periodic table. What is needed to create a movie picture? Electricity. We live in an electric universe. It's all, it's all right there, folks. And the four of wands right here is from the four clubs. This is 26th, 25th card, depending on how you observe it. But this is happy home. The pillars, the life. This is the picture of that. Found from the numerology of life and the 30. Tied to the demiurge. Demiurge is 30. There it is. It's the four of, of, of uh, wands. And then the seven of clubs is the seven of wands. Those of you that are Zach Hubbard fans, well, this is Zach Hubbard's birthday card right there. The seven clubs. This, this is the card of defending what matters. Zach does a lot of that. Defends what matters to him. Part of his code. But, I mean, you know, why he, you know, points at and, you know, Jesuit equals 20. Mason equals 20. All the people that he points his finger at, 
And this is no, no, no backlash, backlash to him. I'm just pointing it out. He does his work. I do mine, but it's all right there. Gives you the picture, you know, and why he's doing his code. <clears throat> Partly why, anyway, I feel. So when you, when you do the numerology of the 47, it's the 111 tied to the magic square of the sun. The sun provides the simulation. It's going to tie into Saturn in there as there as well. And then lastly with this, to finish this presentation up, 35 is 37. Well, it's the 17 and 20, and then it gives us this, you know, here's the 35 right there in chlorine. Remember, tied to the first blood type, it's chlorine 17, calcium 20. 99% of the calcium in our body is in our bones and our teeth, making up our skeletal structure, making you physical. And 17 and 20, when you add up these atomic weights, do the alchemy of them, you're going to get 75. And then you go right back to Lucifer again, the original spelling. It's not even Lucifer. It's hell. It's H-Y-L-L. It's there's the 75. You know, and Lucifer's the light bringer. What does light do when it's brought to the earth? It provides the simulation. <laughs> I mean, even to finish this up, the chlorine and calcium, 52. What is 52? Tellurium. And it means earth. See? See how all that works? And it's prison planet, magnetic and electric. Just, you just all in the same, you know, Chaldean category there. And then lastly, the last slide to finish this up, to get the picture of 35 is 37, we get the star and judgment. The star is born. And then you get the judgment card. The tarot feels, you, you know, you bring in judgment and that's obviously going to tie into theology. Does it mean you get judged? Well, again, you're living in a scripted reality. So I don't even know what judgment would even mean. I don't even know what it would even mean. But it's just really interesting how all this stuff is tied together, showing us the machinations of this reality. So, ladies and gentlemen, we'd love to hear your thoughts on what you saw during this presentation. Um, you know, a lot of you great decoders uh, share your research, and I will encourage you to continue to do so because um, I miss things. I do make mistakes. I have errors in many of my presentations. A lot of you have caught those. Thank you very much. But anyway, there's a lot more that I could have added with this. I do have a part three podcast coming out with Jason from Archaics. We haven't set a date yet, but it will be uh, heavily invested in answering a lot of the questions or comments people have left on the two podcasts we've done previously um, and, uh, and expanding more into this thought provoking idea of the simulation theory. I don't even think it's a theory. I think it's a fact, but anyway, love to hear what you saw during this presentation. But I uh, wanted to just, again, give a big shout out to all you great decoders, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for your donations, your Patreons, those of you that are interested in a personal reading. I do have some selected dates left in June. My, just send me an email, decodereality at gmail.com, and I will get back to you as soon as possible. But that's all I got for today. My name is Logan. As your tour guide, as I say, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, we will see you later.